Around the world, mining companies are under growing pressure to use resources more efficiently and reduce waste. Every truckload of ore that doesn't end up as tailings means less impact on the environment, lower costs and better returns for investors. That's where the idea of pre-concentration comes in, separating what's valuable earlier in the process before it even reaches the plant. Now, to help us understand how this works and why independent assessment matters, we're joined by Adrian Dance, Principal Mining Metallurgist at the SRK Consulting Group. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Adrian, for talking to us. Well, thank you for, uh, for having me. I really appreciate the forum to speak to your audience. Thank you. Well, look, mining companies everywhere are talking about this pre-concentration, right? For those outside the industry, what does that actually mean and why does it matter for miners? Well, that's a great opening question. Uh, uh, as a mineral processor who's been in the industry for 30 odd years, um, it's, a, it's aware, to, I'm a very aware of how things can be improved and how we need to change our mindset. So for those who aren't familiar uh, with typical mineral processing, the, the first stage normally involves grinding material to a very fine size, which consumes a lot of power and water. And consequently, now that the material is fine, when we don't recover it, it goes to a tailing storage area, which is what we've been very typically seeing as the large tailings ponds. The thing about pre-concentration, or another word is coarse beneficiation, is we're trying to see if we can separate a portion of the waste before we actually apply all this energy, all this power, and all the water to slurry it. So we're looking to see if we can increase the grade of the material, reject waste, and this reduces the size of the plant itself to produce the same amount of metal. Now what's so exciting for me is that this is one of the few tools we actually have available to reverse the growing trend of lower and lower grades that we're processing, as well as the more and more challenging metal recoveries that projects that I'm seeing and the industry is facing. Mm -hmm. Right now, how are most companies handling ore material, Adrian? I mean, where do you see gaps or inefficiency in those approaches? Well, the normal response for the industry for the lowering grades and the perhaps lower recoveries of metal is to increase the size of the plant, to process more material, to get economies of scale. But what this is not really doing is the recent growing ore body knowledge that we have. We're getting more and more measurements and data potentially applied through AI, but other more detailed measurements to really understand our ore bodies better. Should we be processing these materials through a single flow sheet, through a single plant? Or should we, in fact, be doing it in a different way? But we now have that very high density of data that we need. In fact, when we call material ore, which is going to the plant, and ore is by definition any material that can be processed economically, it is not all created equal. It is, in fact, a mixture of very good material with a bunch of dilution or waste that has made its way into the process. So what we're doing with pre-concentration is we're actually segregating and isolating these different value streams before we uh, process that. And by knowing what the material is better, we've actually added to the knowledge of what we have uh, in terms of the ore body. So it's looking at exploiting the information we have and creating a more nuanced, sophisticated way of processing and not just simply sending it to one place and ending it up at the tailings farm. So much of that has got to do with evaluation. It's got to do with assessment. And you've stressed this before. It's important to have that unbiased assessment rather than relying solely on equipment vendors. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, SRK Consulting uh, prides itself in being independent, uh, yeah. a group of consultants with great deals of, of expertise in a range of disciplines. And we see this also being very helpful and useful for our clients looking at pre-concentration or bulk or particle sorting. At the moment, the bulk of the expertise lies with the equipment manufacturers. They have the long history of knowing what works and what doesn't work, but they don't necessarily 
have the expertise of the background in the mining industry because they're carrying a lot of this expertise from recycling business or other areas where they've applied the similar sensors. So we see it very, very valuable that projects and existing operating mines feel that they have somebody with uh, experience and knowledge in the area that's independent and really considers what's best for them first so that they can have this assessed. And in fact, uh, SRK Consulting's normal method is the first thing we do. We don't evaluate the material by testing it first. We actually see if there's any economics there. We say, is there an opportunity to add value? Because it is not always the case that pre-concentration works. And at, certainly, there are a lot of cases where pre-concentration does not add value. So the first mm -hmm. thing we do is say, is this the right fit for any kind of solution before we evaluate that? And that's the independent side that we offer. So once the mining company clearly knows what potential benefits are there, and we call that size the prize, they can then do the testing following our methods, and they can then with confidence approach the equipment manufacturers having the context and understanding that really allows the manufacturers to apply their knowledge in a much more efficient way. And against that backdrop, Adrian, the truth is all grades are falling. Recovery is getting harder. From your perspective, what are the biggest challenges miners face when upgrading ore? And how does pre-concentration, once again, help address that? Well, thank you for that. I, uh, it is something that I've been very passionate about in my mm. involvement in the past in, in mine to mill projects and looking at how feed to the plant can be improved. And that's typically from the size of the material. And now we're looking at it in a different perspective, which is the grade of the material by size. But what we don't have much information on as processors, though we've been doing this for hundreds of years, if not thousands, is we have limited information on where the metal of interest occurs at a very coarse size, say two inches or larger or 50 millimeters for non-US people. So at this size, is the metal in only some of the particles or is it in all of them? Because we don't know that typically because to get a grade, we have to pulverize and destroy that information. So we focus very much on knowing how the material presents itself right after we touch it. As soon as we've crushed it to the coarsest size possible, are the, are, is the gold all accumulating in the fines? Is it uh, perhaps associated with only the softer material? really understanding how the material prevents, presents itself at a coarse fraction is something that's new. And recently with uh, certain sensors such as X-ray transmissive technology, we can see inside these particles and see where the metal is. And I suppose that's a good point to bring in or an area to bring in this less intrusive sensor-based testing. That's part of the toolkit, right? What are the trade-offs of that? Well, absolutely. What we've done is knowing what the industry has in terms of uh, available samples, and that's quite limiting in an early stage project. It yeah. is only half drill core samples that are available. How can we work within those constraints to deliver good information on the ore characteristics for as economic uh, uh, ways as possible? So we've developed a technology uh, in the lab where we can take relatively small samples, uh, and, and really understand a lot about how hard it is, how it will break, where the metal goes, is it, is it amenable to sensor sorting? By doing this, we've actually created a, a solution that is not disruptive to the normal metallurgical evaluations that are being done or how people look at their ore body. So by doing this, we are saying, look, we're going to remove any hurdles uh, to do this sort of evaluation. So there's really no reason you can't do that. Um, alternate ways to evaluate such sensor sorting is typically providing a manufacturer with anything from 500 kilos to two tons of material, which it produces an excellent result, mm -hmm. but ultimately it's something that is such a large composite, it doesn't really add a lot of value to any company. They don't know what to do with the results. So our angle, our focus is to say, rather than to test one large sample, which proves that the sensor equipment works, Instead, let's understand our ore body by testing tens, if not dozens, of smaller mass samples to really understand how variability is, changes within the deposit. 
Before I let you go, Adrian, I mean, some investor or company would be looking at this and saying, well, look, is, is this kind of stuff expensive? Because there's often the perception that new metallurgic methods could cost money, right? How does SRK's approach to testing smaller, more targeted examples that you, you spoke about make a process more cost effective for miners? Well, certainly we've, we've gone to the state of actually purchasing our own sensor unit so that we can do this work independently as cheaply as possible. Yeah. But it's nothing that we're doing cannot be done by any other commercial lab. Uh, and we're happy to share the protocol. And that's something that's fairly novel in the industry. We're not hiding behind any sort of licensing costs. But again, what we're doing is we're, we're reducing the cost of each test so that companies can do tens, if not dozens and dozens of samples and understand how things vary. In fact, one of the novel out outcomes of our test procedure is we can actually simulate how a circuit would perform. We can change the circuit. We can change how it operates. We can exploit some material goes one way, some material goes another way. And to demonstrate this, we've actually uh, been using our discrete event simulation team here at SRK based in Sudbury, uh, led by uh, Pierre Lebrec, and we've developed a dynamic simulation model that we're testing out on some material to show how running these circuits in a variable way, in a dynamic way, can add value even more than the static assumptions of assuming pre-concentration works. So we're really at the beginning of incorporating how pre-concentration can be shown to clients, how the value can be demonstrated, and in a much more a, a dynamic and variable way. So it's an exciting uh, period to be involved in this. Now, it certainly does sound compelling. Well, thanks very much indeed for those insights. Adrian Dance, Principal Mining Metallurgist at the SRK Consulting Group. Thanks indeed, Adrian. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it.